going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Stay Waiting Podcast. I'm joined by my co-host himself, the legend Sugary. How you doing? Doing all right, thank you, man. A uh, very interesting weekend of fights that's just gone by. Some good fights coming ahead, so looking to lock in. I was going to say, you hit the nail on the bed. Some good fights coming up, good fights on the weekend. And joining us to break down one of the big fights as well of the weekend, the co-founder, Undalut Media, a friend of the show, the legend himself, Sam. How you doing? I'm good, bro. Love the intro, man. Appreciate that, man. Good to be here. I was going to say, how'd you find the intro? How'd you find the intro? Loved it. Loved it. One of the best intros I've had. One of the best intros I've had, so I appreciate that, man. But yeah, it's good to be on here again with the guys. Um, Yeah, chop up, have some fun and just, yeah, have some convo, man. So let's go into it. We're here to break down Canelo versus Triple G, the three of the trilogy, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to go to you, Ray, first before we get Sam's views. Um, the fight ended with Canelo winning on a unanimous decision. The only, when you look at the fight itself in totality, it looked like it was a Canelo domination. There wasn't much from Triple G outside of the ninth round in terms of anything offensively. But then you look at the scorecards and we had two 115, 113. Why, what can you possibly take away from that fight to even give a scorecard that particular way? It's funny. I think those were the judges that Golovkin needed in the first fight. But then he would have actually, <laughs> maybe he would have actually got the win if he had those fight, those dumb judges in the first fight. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether they just wanted to make him look stronger than he was so that maybe he might have signed a deal with the zone. That is definitely corruption of the highest order. But I don't know. Maybe they just didn't want to muddy Triple G's name too much because they have future plans. But ironically, I heard this is his last deal under the zone. Oh, last deal, last fight under the zone as well. So I don't know if it's a case of you know maybe if we make you look good, then you might sign on with us again. Maybe they've got future plans, or maybe because of just of how the decisions have not gone his way in the past that they just thought let's gift him this. But I don't even know, man. At this point. It was it was just a weird scorecard, but I was completely shot by Canelo, even though it wasn't his best performance. I was going to say, with that being said, we do have our sports business inside this, Sam. And you know, when Canelo's in town, it's money day all day. He's taken over. So that's the first thing I'm going to say before anything else. We've got scorecards from Ray. As Canelo taken over as the new money man from Floyd Mayweather in boxing, is he the biggest cash cow in boxing right now? Yeah, like basically he's become... Mayday, he's the guy like, if you want to get a payday, you need to fight Canelo because, as we all know, Canelo and Floyd had that blueprint. He would always fight on specific days within the year. And it's always Cinco de Mayo and then Mexican independence. And, you know, with Canelo being with um, Golden Boy before, they've kind, of, they've kind of followed that blueprint. And in terms of Canelo, in terms of what he's done, he's been able to build up his brand. Before he started, he was on the undercards of Floyd, building his brand there. So when he got to a certain level, he could take over the cards and be the, the main headline on the card. And yeah, he's, he's built the brand. So if when you're fighting Canelo, you know you're going to get paid. And also, you're most likely going to get pay-per-view points as well. So um, from reports that we've heard, he's obviously base salary for uh, Canelo was 45 million. And then the base salary for um, Triple G was 20. So taking into consideration pay-per-view points, sponsorship money, you know, attendance fees that you're going to get, they're probably both going to make over 40 million. Do you know what I mean? So, look, who wouldn't want to do that? And just alluding on the fight, it was it was a payday for Golovkin and a payday for Canelo. Because you look at the fight, it, everyone knew the first fight, the first one, the second one, we knew what the situation was. Seeing this, we knew, look, cool, Canelo's going to win. Golovkin's a 40-year-old guy. He's not the same. And for me, I just looked at it like Canelo and Eddie Hearn thought, you know what? We don't want to go straight back into that bill fight and have back-to-back -back losses. Let's get a good name under our belt, beat him, win, and then we can figure out what we're going to do after. So at least it keeps the momentum of building that Canelo brand of he's that superstar. And with having Eddie Hearn in his corner, who's a big fan of Dana White, he's kind of copied that blueprint of like, it doesn't matter if you take an L, as long as you're fighting the best of the best, you can take that L, come back, try and do redemption, and if not, you're still going to get a great payday anyway. Do you know what I mean? So, look, I love what they're looking to do. Similar to Andy Josh, I'll probably take him on a little world tour, go in different countries and just maximise your potential while you're there. Do you know what I mean? I was going to say, so you touched on something that I'm going to go to Ray on here, and it's about Triple G. In this fight, based on how it turned out and stuff, leading into it then, knowing the money behind it, 
it was just kind of one of them things that it's my final fight uh, with the sword. Let me just maximize the most amount of money. I still have that aura of being Triple G and people still believing I won some of the fights. And Canelo's beating a 40-year-old me. So it would potentially devalue that victory no matter how dominant it would get. So was it kind of a Triple G payday? Uh, or do you think he should have looked at it to say, let me fight somebody who I potentially could win as well? I think this was a bit of both. It was obviously he, in his mind, as a fighter, he was supposed to have supreme confidence in himself. I'm sure he knows that he's not who he used to be, but I think at the same time, he's probably like, you know what? Even if I go out of my shield, I'm going to get this payday. In words, to paraphrase Denzel Washington, I'm leaving it with something. I can run away. <laughs> I'm leaving it with something. I bet Triple G, 20 mil base salary, he's leaving there with something indeed. So I think for him, it was just a case of that one more shot at greatness just to see like if he still got it. So, you know, he might have tripped on that hurdle, but it's all good. At the same time, it's that thing that Sam said, he's 40 years old. You can go for it. And it's one of those things of in life, he can say that he didn't leave no stone, no stone unturned. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's a case of, boy, you ain't going to look back and thinking, rah, if I fought my man, what could have really happened? Is that no, you fought him, you was 40, you got a big payday, and you still got your belts at middleweight. So at this point, some people are saying he should retire, but at the same time, he might just want to have two more big fights at middleweight for cash out. There's still potential of, like I said, he's potentially a free agent, so... If PBC offer him the right, PBC offer him the right bag, then Jamal Charles is right there. But he's another one as well that he's got to sort himself out because I know this past year he's gone through a lot of like legal troubles and apparently he hasn't been in the best mind frame. Not as similar to his brother who's like we've got undisputed and got his mind right. They're saying Jamal Charles is another one that needs to get into the right spot, and this might be a best or good fight for both of them. He's got that WBC belt that people have said he's been hoarding. And Triple G has two belts where it's kind of like that legacy is still there. And if Jamal Charlo wants to reach great heights, he's going to have to take big fights like that. So, listen, man, Al Heyman, give Triple G the bag. Um, let's talk about the bag then in terms of what this revenue uh, re generated, the revenue generated for this. First two fights came up to over 1 million pay-per-view buys then. With how the structure was with DAZN and DAZN pay-per-view this year then, for this event itself, Sam, what do you think the prediction would be? I know Eddie said it'd do about 40 to 50,000 in the UK, about mm. 500 to 8, 800,000 globally. Do you believe that? Or do you think it was just him bringing up numbers without any sort of facts? Yeah, I think he's it's Eddie and he's a businessman, so he's he's gonna sell the numbers. And if you look at it, the way the zone structure is, is a bit it's a bit wild because not wild, but it's just different, shall I say, because obviously you have your core subscribers that are paying their $9.99 a month, and then obviously there's for the pay-per-view, you're gonna have to you know shell out another to say $60 or $70. So if you was deep in it in terms of if it was HBO, you know the numbers would be big or showtime, the numbers would be big, but because of how the platform is, I'll probably gauge that. It would probably do in America probably between three fifty to maybe four fifty pay per view buy pay per view buys four hundred and fifty thousand. So I think Eddie's probably close in the UK. The, the fight game's changing it for me since Floyd left. Me staying up for fights now is a bit of a it's a it's a long hurdle to do. So I'd probably say fifty k in the UK is on the higher end. It could be lower, but I think in terms of numbers overall globally, probably say it does about. 650 to 700 so Eddie Hearn ain't too far out but you know he's he's piling on some extra numbers on there for him I was going to say for you Ray then because we've talked about the model that they've gone through and I will talk I'm going to talk to you some about with Amazon American football as well soon and how it kind of correlates but you've been kind of in favour or understanding of how zone has gone about putting the pay-per-view structure in if for example, they continue to have Canelo, which it looks like they will do, and other American fighters or big fights on the pay-per-view card, but it's not doing well for them in terms of the subscription and the pay-per-view buys. Could it, could it be potentially a U-turn and they stop the pay-per-views here in the UK for the American fights and just put it under the subscription barrier? Or do you think we're here as pay-per-views here to stay always? 
I think it's a case of fight by fight basis because it's Canelo. With a guy like Canelo, remember he's got 45 mil guaranteed. There's no way they're not doing pay per view. Fact. Even like when when Sam said about fifty thousand, I think that's even being generous. Yeah. Because when it comes to a lot of the UK guys, they don't like paying pay per view unless it is a UK based fight. And even then, like I guess American pay per view and UK pay per view is different. In the UK, we rarely have pay per views, so it's a case of do you know what? I might just shell out some money, and even then, it's what twenty something pounds. Yeah. yeah. And that's every now and then. So, you know, you've got the AJ fight. You've got... I guess my well, point is more with the timing because it's four yeah. in the morning. That's, yeah, that's especially... Saying. If it was 10 o'clock, I like, it's like when I said I looked at the zone and it was 1798 mm. for new subscribers, the pay-per-view and a month. So I thought that's fine because Joyce and Parker's 20 pounds. That's, like, that's, that's nuts what I mean. as well. At that's least with the zone, role. you have a full month of whatever... But because mm. of the timings, were they wrong to put that on pay-per-view, do you think? Oh, it's, it's not. Like I said, it's not a wrong or right thing. It's a Canelo thing. When you're mm. the cash cow, you have to generate as much money as possible to get him that guaranteed purse. And so even if it's a case of it does 20,000 in the UK, 20,000 pay-per-view buyers is better than all the subscri- trying to get that much, scrape that money from subscription. Mm. So I think it's just a case of when it's Canelo, you're going to have to do that. But there's not too many big stars like that in boxing. So I still don't think the zone's mission of trying to make boxing pay-per-viewless isn't dead in the water because I don't think there's too many stars in boxing. And I feel like we've criticised PBC model on here a few times because we're like, these aren't even stars and you're charging people to watch them. That's crazy. And the thing is, in, in America, like Sam alluded to, their pay per views are like $70 plus, which is, that is nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. And they got a pay per view every other month. Because you got to remember, they got boxing, that's like every other month. They got UFC, that's also every other month. And the subscription on top, which is, yeah. listen, man, I feel for the American fans because to go out of pocket like that for every, for, if, if you want to get a fighting quality and not illegally stream it, because that's the elephant in the room. It happens. <laughs> and if if and if you keep on, especially if you give product that's not like delivering on the bank for your buck on the money, like the fact that Ruiz Ortiz was pay-per-view is, that's nuts. Even the fact that, I've said it on here, Joyce First Parker shouldn't be pay-per-view. If anything, this should be the big showcase fight for Which Joe is. Joyce. This should be the big showcase fight for this. Be like, listen, you've got Joyce Park here, former world title challenge. Not even, I'm saying challenger. Former world title holder, and then you have Joe Joyce who's looking to, who's on a precipice of a title show. He's a mandatory, and he's putting his mandatory status on the line. That should be for everyone to view. But here's another thing we need to consider: Does BT have a pay per view guarantee for the year where they're like Queensbury? You have to give us a certain amount of pay per view per year, and this might just fall under that. So the business of it can be, yeah, so many ebbs and flows. So the reason I say this is, and Sam, you'll come to me, because we're NFL guys as well. In America, they've now, well, I think they even did it last year, but this year as well is what I've seen. Um, they've got Thursday night football uh, as part of your Amazon Prime subscription. No extras. You don't need ESPN. You don't need nothing like that. It's just straight in with your subscription. And I can't remember the numbers, but I saw a tweet, and it was something like our subscriptions went through the roof because of Thursday Night Football. So with that being said, if DAZN offered certain fights that were based in America, but as part of your subscription, would you not think they potentially could see a rise in their subscriptions as well? Bearing in mind this month, the way I see it, if you buy this month and you had Canelo on there, you also had the shot to get Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. for about £12. So you weren't paying that same, no, about £10. So you weren't paying that 18 pound that looks like you're spending a lot more money. So did Dazon miss a trick here? Um, first of all, I saw the tweet he was talking about. I think it was um, a, a company called Front Office Sports. And they, I follow them on Twitter. They post a lot of good stuff. Um, but I think with Amazon, it's very, it's very difficult to compare because the good thing about Amazon and why it's so good is that you get all this in a bundle with your Amazon Prime. 
So that incentivizes you to buy products on Amazon. So Amazon are not going to make money from you actually signing up. They're going to make money from you saying, because I've got Amazon Prime, I'm going to just order bare stuff on Amazon and get it to right come. Oh, no, so, you're right. <laughs> the number is the way it works there is very is it's difficult, and that's why people do it. Because, for example, like me, I've got Amazon Prime now. So when games are in the Premier League in the UK, I can watch on Amazon Prime, but then I can still go on Amazon and order 50 products and say, "Cool, I'm going to get them in two days because I've got Amazon Prime." So that's how they're making the money up. Those new people will come, but because they're on, then they've got Amazon Prime. Now you want to buy something, you want it to come tomorrow. You're like, "Oh snap, I've got Amazon Prime." Let me use it. So that's where Amazon make the markup. So for the zone, it's kind of difficult to say if they could do that because they don't have a product like that where they can do something. But there's always ways to kind of incentivize people to buy any add-ons where, like you said, you, you order this fight, you get another two months free or something where it incentivizes you to, to pick up that extra package. So it's just kind of hard to, it's an origin and apples in terms of what Amazon done. Well, and it's what interesting you said that. I don't know if you realize this, but DAZN conveniently mm. started to get into the gambling game the weekend of the fight. So yes. there, might be, there might be something in there for them to put something in their subscription here, get your subscription and get like a free 20 pound bet or something like that. Little things to incentivize people to get into subscribing or maintaining the zone subscription potentially i don't know do you think there's a root of that that could happen there i think especially with sports i'm always talking about this off camera especially in the fight business that's where a lot of these brands like gambling could kind of affiliate themselves with because again a lot of brands don't like to associate themselves with boxing or mma because of the brutality of it and then also stuff that happened off the field with these fighters so in terms of doing that where they can incentivize you to, to gamble and you can get a package of certain free fights might be a way where you can do that. And again, a lot of people gamble for fun. So if you're watching a fight and you can gamble in real time when you're watching a fight, that's going to make them more money in terms of people are going to be spending. Because in America, gambling is so new to them that everybody wants to gamble and find a way to make money. So I think if they do add that in there, it would be great because we've seen ESPN do it. We've seen companies like FanDuel and DraftKings do, you know, sponsorship of companies like Pat McAfee and Dan Lepetard show. So there's there's so much stuff to, to talk about as well. And just alluding on what you said with Amazon, I just saw the tweet. So Amazon said they posted a um, huge boost in signups in Amazon Prime subscribers. So in the, U in the US, the number was 143 million new signups. And then worldwide, it was 200 million. So it just shows you, because of NFL, which is king in America, altogether they gained, what, 343 million new subscribers. So Now, I do want to move on to one thing before we wrap up, and that's something you guys have both touched about, that's superstars and stars in the sport. So I'm going to go to you, Ray, on this first. Canelo himself, is he a star or a superstar in the world of sports? Let me tell you something. In the world of boxing, there is two superstars, Canelo and AJ. Facts. Because especially what Sam was alluding to before, and people might have watched this around, AJ again, yes, AJ again. Before yeah, AJ exactly. came into this thing, there's certain sponsors that weren't touching boxing, like Sam alluded to. Yeah, AJ came in with a clean image and showed people you can sponsor you can sponsor this sport and yes there might you might see combat sports as you know brutal whatever adjective word you want to use however people are gentlemen in this sport and it doesn't mean that everyone's going to get those sponsors but you can get those blue collar sponsors for like top athletes like AJ that he's not going out here you know yeah he may have had the mishap with the music <laughs> pose fight but in general, the guy carries himself well. And you can see that now trickle down to other fighters as well, where it's just like there's big sponsors that can trust these fighters to, okay, I can trust you to, to sponsor you and you're not going to make a fool out of us. So going back to it, there's two superstars, AJ and um, Canelo. Then there's the lower tier, there's the stars. Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, 
Usyk is on the precipice of coming if he gets one more big win. And then Javante Davis. Those okay. are stars. And then I'd say a lower tier than that, you've got burgeoning stars. Mm. So, you... Shakur Stevenson, potentially Devin Haney, but I think he needs one more victory. And then a dark horse is, ironically, Bam Rodriguez, who was on the Canelo for Shuffle G undercard and is a... Let me call it a commercial discovery that the Zone and Matchroom have made. And that's one thing I think people underestimate what Matchroom has done or what Eddie's done is that he can do a lot of these international cards and, you know, pick up international fighters. Because I know a lot of people look at him like, oh, he shouldn't have left Sky Sports. Look what's happened to him now. The UK shows have gone downhill, etc., etc. Which I'm not going to argue for against. You could argue it. Fair enough. However, his international presence of what Eddie's been able to do is They've now opened Matchroom Australia. They've now gone into the Latin American market in America with Bam Rodriguez. Is like commercially is a big discovery, and I think he's got a lot of options now in the lightweight weight classes. And even with like Alicia Baumgartner as well, what I've seen with Eddie Hearn that he's been able to do with the, the Zone and Matchroom collaboration is that he's got his own fighters that get beat, and Eddie's been signing those champions that beat his fighters. <laughs> because he's got the freedom, no, he's got the freedom to do it. Like at Sky Sports, he may not have, not have had that freedom to be like, you know, he Alicia Baumgartner, for example. She came in there, she beats Terry Harper, he exploded one of the best knockouts of last year. He goes and signs Alicia Baumgartner, and there's a few other cases like that. So I feel like I say that to say this: there's two superstars who are near the end of their careers, which is AJ and Canelo. The next. Super, I think Javante Davis could potentially become a superstar if he likes to say, right, you don't need belts to become a superstar. It's a lie. The belts don't make the fighter, however, to legitimize your superstardom, you do need a world title. You do. I don't care what the, I know they're trying to remake the rules and because <laughs> Mayweather and, and do you know what knows me about the Mayweather example? Mayweather got the belts before he became a superstar. That's the thing. Yeah, the people forget about that. It's like Mayweather got the belts before he became a superstar. So this is another thing of, well, Floyd didn't need the belt. Yeah, because he had a, he already got the belt and showed that I am world level. So then he was able to be like, cool, I've already proven I'm world level. So then he took to, you know, the, the wrestler gimmick of becoming the elite hill and making people hate him. But you can't make people, you can't become polarised and make people hate you if you haven't got certain things. So it's like, I'm seeing, you know, Javante Davis and Devin Haney, for example, right now, they're going back and forth. And, you know, some of Javante Davis' team is saying, well, Devin's so hungry to fight us, this, that, and third. But it's like, Javante, he is the undisputed lightweight champion. Like, Unless you want, if you want to become a superstar, you're going to need one of those world titles. I don't care what you think. So I think just, you need to say that. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, go on, go on, go on. I was just going to say to Sam then, with Ray's point about the two superstars in boxing right now, in terms of them globally stacking up against other sports, yeah. do, they, do they stack up to that? I'm talking the Williams sisters, Fedra, Nadal... Then I'm thinking basketball, LeBron James, to a lesser extent. But I do think if you put his face on compared to the rest of the NFL, Tom Brady, people would be able to see him out there. Mm. Where do, Can let's say Canelo, because I think Joshua, being that he's British, just has a bit more of a yeah. universal appeal. Whereas mm. I think Canelo, I still say this, if you, we were saying this off air, if you were to put Canelo out there in the UK to someone, they wouldn't, I don't know if they would recognize him. So I'm interested mm. for you to explain or to give an insight. Where do you think Canelo would rank up against all them other athletes that I mentioned? Yeah, so just to kind of piggyback off what Ray said in terms of the superstars, yeah, I agree with AJ and Canelo in, in boxing, they're superstars. And you said a good point in terms of um AJ just because he's in the UK you get a bit of you get more dust where you're kind of universal and you've seen what Eddie Hans tried to do he's, he's fought in Saudi Arabia he's fought in America he's fought in the UK but then he's also fought different international people so when you know those fights are going live they're going to different territories that people see um and in terms of Canelo as a global superstar um I don't think he is because 
as we know, as much as everyone loves America, America is very narrow minded. And if you're not really in a global sport, for example, i.e. basketball, which is global in America because they've played international games in Paris, London, Mexico, different countries they travel, they're global superstars. But everyone else within American sports, they don't look outside of America. They just think the world is America. And in terms of like the Mexicans and Hispanics, again, when it comes to boxing, all you see them focus on is the American market and the Mexican market. Because we know that when the Me Mexicans fight, they're going to show out and, and buy pay-per-views, come to your event and sell it. That's why Floyd loved fighting them, because he knew I'm the ultimate hill. I'm going to fight a Mexican on these specific days and these pay-per-view numbers are going to just skyrocket in it. So just in terms of Canelo, I would say as an overall athlete, I would say he's a global, he's a superstar. He's not a global superstar or he's not a mega superstar. And you can tell based on his numbers, because if you had, we just recently had a breakdown of, you know, Premier League athletes or footballers, shall I say. And if you look at the breakdown, you saw Mbappe, he had like 125 million, but that was based on his contract they've got with PSG. But in terms of endorsements, it was only like 20 million. Um, and apart from, Messi, Ronaldo, Neymar, those guys there was, it was kind of equal. So you might have 60 million in salary, 50 million endorsements, and you can see how they are brands off the field. And I don't think Canelo is that kind of brand outside of boxing where, you know, he's going to get like AJ. AJ's got Land Rover, he's got AP, he's got Lucas, he's got these big brands. And I don't think those brands in America are touching Canelo and saying, look, we want Canelo to help us reach X, Y demographic and build that. So in a nutshell, I'd say he's just, he's a star. He's a star, but in boxing, it's hard to become global unless you've got that pristine, clean image like AJ and the way he's been nurtured and PR and being in the UK, that gives you a lot of help because you've got access to so many British luxury brands anyway. So they're already global brands that people want to, you know, they have an affinity for Burberry's, Land Rover, um, all these type of stuff and you see Rolex is always going to sponsor you AP, you know, the Patek so um, yeah, I think Canelo he's, he's trying to build it but it's hard even even the biggest of the Latinos that was in boxing you know, De La Hoya, he was never a global superstar, he was a big superstar in... Oh, no, controversial Do you know I say that bro? Because if you take if you take a picture of Oscar and take him outside America he said, who's this guy? They'll be like I, I don't know I can show them R9. I can go to anywhere, show oh, R9. Yeah, 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 They'll yeah. be like, All right, fair enough, fair enough. Yep, yep. You know, or Thierry Henry. They, they will know David Beckham. Like, yeah. you, you would see them like, you go to China now, show Canelo. They'll be like, Prince Harry? They're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's a boxer. Yeah. I took that from a basto. I took that from a basto. He's a Prince Harry. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> they, they would know. Like, Yo. LeBron, all those guys, they're, they're mega stars. You see them in the road. Obviously, they're, they're six foot eight. You're going to stop and say, you the LeBron guy? You're like, yeah, that's me. And do you know what I mean? Oh, my chest. <laughs> so, I guess, I guess on that point then, I'll go to you, Ray, before we wrap up, because I want to know, is it boxing's fault? The way, like, how Sam said, like, with footballers, you can literally take a picture of, of uh, Ronaldo, Messi, Neymar, etc., and they'll be known everywhere. Is it boxing's fault that they can't promote the boxing superstars into global superstars then? Yes and no. I think yes because politics gets in the way of boxing and fights that should have been made a long time ago. Cough, cough, Spence first Crawford. You've got situations where it's like you get stuff drawn out and then it just only hurts the brand because even though there's a big pay dispute when it comes to like UFC and their fighters, I even look at it now, like, a lot of UFC fighters, if you want to talk about commercial profile, are bigger than boxers. And some yeah. bo some boxing fans might be like, no, no, they're not. This, down the third. Let me tell you something. Habib's profile is bigger than a lot of boxers. Conor's profile is bigger than a lot of boxers. Even Israel Adesanya. Listen, man, I never thought I'd see the day. I started watching MMA, like, regularly from about 07, 08, yeah. I've got uncles coming up to me, telling me, Ra, you know, oh, I see that Adesanya's going to fight this weekend. Or I remember another one of my family members was just like, oh, Leon Edwards first Usman. I'm just like, I'm like, I didn't tell you this. Who told you this? Yeah. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? And I feel like 
boxing shot itself in the foot because the politics, but then also people need to just take into consideration making a star is difficult, man. And I think we take it for granted sometimes when you see greatness and you just think that everyone's just because you being great on the field is going to transfer commercial wise. And it doesn't because even the same with tennis, you see that like Federer retired last week and Serena retired. Those are like generational talents. And if you look at tennis, for example, and the reason I'm comparing tennis to boxing is because both of them are, you know, single competition sports. Who are the stars in tennis now once Djokovic and Nadal also leave? I had that debate as well. Do you so, get what I'm saying? So it goes back. So this is the thing that what point you made there is what I make to a lot of people. Even though I watch tennis, so I can tell you who somebody is. But if you're a newbie, there isn't that global brand. So I think you're right. When Canelo, when Joshua retires, unless these crop of guys that you mentioned have really push their way through, we're at a point where, yes, you'll probably hear about that two or three fights in a year where you'll go and you'll put yourself up to watch. But you won't be watching certain cars. You mentioned Shakur Stevenson. He's fighting on Friday. I can guarantee you there's a lot of people that do not already know that he's fighting on Here, Friday. Here's now. the thing with Shakur, though. He's not in a sexy division at the moment. Mm. He also said that he's moving up soon. So I think the sexy divisions are either lightweight, welterweight, yeah. middleweight to an extent. Yeah. Middleweight, I think, still needs a few more like uh, people to join in. Light heavyweight and heavyweight. Mm. Those are five divisions out of I don't know how many boxing divisions there are. It's the whole same reason why the UFC doesn't like to do too many divisions because they feel like it dilutes it. So it's almost like certain things have to be right. So that's why I said Shakur is on the precipice of being a star if he goes up to lightweight, but he also needs the competition at lightweight as well. And his issue is Devin Haney's going to move up soon because he struggles to make lightweight. And I know he's, he's a growing guy. He's young, he's growing. And Juante Davis just doesn't seem like he's going to fight anyone. And he's a... This is why I keep on saying he's a bird he's a, star, maker. Star. he's a money maker. No, no, but not pay-per-view-wise. Gate-wise, yes. Yeah. Live event-wise, yes. Buzz-wise, yes. He's not a pay-per-view star yet. But then, and I want him to be that. And I think he... That's why I'm saying he needs the belt to become a pay-per-view star. And then maybe he can maybe go into that... Maybe I can't... Maybe that... You know what? Now I have to look back on it. I don't know if I can call Javante a star. But just a quick who, who is a star in boxing? Yeah, that, like I said, man, you got to appreciate the greats whilst they're here. Because 100%. there's a lot of people, once these lot go, yeah, you're going to have to rebuild. And it's going to be very, very hard to distinguish who the stars are. And commercial just... and sporting-wise. I'll let you have final words. I was saying, in terms of what you're saying, Ray, in terms of UFC, and I think one thing that we we'll always have to always give credit as well, and people forget, we got to remember Dana as well. He's built the UFC on a brand of what they do, and he makes sure all the guys are doing the right commercial stuff. They've got deals with ESPN. They're making sure they go in all these, you know, shows on ESPN where you get the crossover fans with the NFL guys, the boxing guys, and also one thing that's also dope about them, they do embedded. So people have stories to follow them. So you follow the journey, what they're doing, where they're coming from, where they're going. So I, with me, I love Dana White. I love his blueprint, what he's been able to build and where he's going to, to do. And also going back to Floyd, again, people forget Floyd was a great businessman because he went, he went to go and do Dance with the Stars, what got him to the masses. So people saw he was. And then also he did WWE. And there's a lot of crossover with WWE and combat sports. And as much as we may hate him and when we look at some of the stuff he was doing back in the day, Vince McMahon, which was wild, again, he's a great storyteller in terms of building brands and getting people out there. And that's why you see the Tyson Fury Furies, because they want to break America. They're doing segments on WWE and going to these events. We see Logan Paul. Like, Logan Paul's transition to WWE, he's got to be a superstar. Like, Brilliant see, wrestler as well, oh, man. I can't even, I can't, I can't even hate that, him that boy. Now I'm thinking, let, let me just put this down. Paul, both Paul brothers are elite for business marketing. I know people say about Jake and with him in boxing, but yeah. he's got Anderson yeah. Silva. If he wins that, like, come on, you've got to give him a little bit oh, more. I'm going to cry. Logan is so smart because he's going to get paid as handsomely as his brother 
but less risk because it's all pre-planned and they're gonna make yeah. him win certain stuff. Like my man's been in wrestling for how long? He's fighting Roman Reigns. Like make it make sense. And that's a big fight. You got Al Heyman there. Like so not Al Heyman, Paul Heyman. I used to be a big wrestler. Wrong Heyman, wrong Heyman. Yeah, yeah. I used to love I used to love it. I used to love wrestling in it. And yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. I'll just see on the on Twitter on the TL but Again, just in terms of building your brand and going to the right things, that's how you have to help your portfolio. And I think a lot of these boxers just think, oh, like you said, because I'm talented, that means I'm going to be a superstar. No, you have to align yourself with the right people and get into the right doors to build that brand. Now, I'm with you on that because I, I do think there's a, before we wrap up, I do think there's a little bit of arrogance that comes from boxers to say, uh, we don't want to do, like you said, wrestling or we don't want to do this particular thing because it's fake and it's this. I do think there's also a bit of arrogance that comes from not wanting to participate in certain cars where your brand comes out. I remember when KSI fought Logan and oh, I, I don't know if it was... I don't know, it was I want Devin to say, Haney and Billy Joe that fought on his card. Yeah, and there was there was the anger out that how are we yeah. on the undercard? Oh, and embrace the... Wait, wait, let me let, before, you, before I know we're going to finish in a bit. To all the bitter boxing fans that are chatting rubbish about all these YouTube boxers, yeah, grow up. Because <laughs> all these people, rah, they're ruining boxing. No, they are not, bro. There's a lot of people in the public. You lot don't pay for nothing to do with boxing, but you want these top boxers to get paid. How does that make sense? A lot of you do not check for who's the next up. A lot of you don't really watch boxing like that, but you're just upset because these YouTubers are doing it. Let me tell you something. Whether these YouTubers do sports-wise they've got their own crowd that's going to watch it. Because for me, mm. I don't see YouTube boxing and professional boxing as two different things. Because I'm not... And credit to... Listen, man, salute to some of the boxers out there that's just admittedly being that. Do you know what? Shout out to YouTubers for doing their thing. Because I think it's, uh, Lyndon Arthur was on Twitter at the time. He was trolling the fans a bit. But he was just like, rah, maybe I need to jump onto YouTube boxing because these are getting paid. But from what I got from it is that Lyndon Arthur just understood commercial wise these guys get it so all the people complaining about oh it's not real boxing and this down a third no one's saying it's real boxing it's not like sky sports news ain't reporting youtube boxers over professional boxers and even if they are it's because professional boxing isn't viable and that's stuff that the boxing world has to look at themselves as to why that is stop blaming the youtube boxers because it's different let me tell you this if those youtubers then try to go into football they are not going to overshadow professional footballers because professional footballers aren't fighting over purse bids to face each other. United and the C is not going to be like, rah, well, do you know what, yeah, we're on BT Sport, but we're on Sky Sports, we can't face each other now. Do you get what I'm saying? It's, a lot of it is boxing's own fault. It's, mm-hmm. it's a give and take because the competition is good because it allows fighters to get paid more. But at the same time, when people are on opposing sides and no one wants to work for each other, then you're going to spoil the sport. And I think every sport has pros and cons and boxing just needs to look within. And, and guess what? And the powers that be might not even want to change anything because they're getting paid. How about that one, fans? So You're right, you know. But with that, are, to you. with that, we are going to wrap up today's episode. We talked a bit of sports business and I think we've not done that in a while. So Sam, I appreciate you for coming on. Yeah, man, love for that, man. I appreciate that talk. Always, and, Ray, as always, you know, you know what it is, man. I'll give you the final words as well. Listen, people, stay weighed in. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Check that out. Click the hashtag, comment, subscribe. And you know what? I'll pass on to Sam for the socials as well. Let them know. No, I appreciate that, guys, man. So on the Instagram, it's undiluted media underscore. Um, on Twitter, it's undiluted media one. And if you want to check out the business of our post on LinkedIn, it's just Sam Shosanya. You'll find me. And with that, guys, that's another episode of the Stay Waiting Podcast. As always, appreciate everyone for watching and following and liking and all that good stuff on all the social media platforms and YouTube. But with that, we're signing out. Love and peace.